Local three, three children rescued after a double murder in Loveland. SWAT team was here and just kids screaming in the streets. We're talking to neighbors about how rare this is in Loveland as police piece together the tragedy. A new COVID booster shot coming this fall specifically targeted at the BA5 variant. We're talking to one doctor about why it's so important to get vaccinated again. And Coloradans seem to be feeling lucky how much money we've spent on Mega Millions tickets with tonight's jackpot crossing the billion dollar mark. Good luck to you. <laughs> Good morning. I'm Nicole Brady. Hey, I need that luck. Yes. <laughs> I'm Jessica Crawford. Uh, now we're taking a look at the forecast. And today, maybe a little bit different from yesterday when we were talking about hail, mm -hmm. all that lightning. <laughs> Yeah, still a chance of storms, but yeah, our risk of severe weather is going to be lower today. Still on the cool side, too. We will see more storms pop up, and some of the heavier rain that we're going to get with the storms today will be across parts of southern Colorado. So it's still a little unsettled today. Gray out there this morning, cloud cover here in town, some areas of patchy fog on the plains, and a pretty slow warm up. We were in the low 60s here about an hour ago. Now we're at 65 in Denver, and we'll see those temps climb a few degrees each hour. By 11 o'clock, 74. We are going to hit highs in the low 80s today, so it will be a little warmer. Denver right around 82, upper 70s near Castle Rock and Castle Pines, and more 60s again for the northern Front Range Mountains. Estes Park, Allens Park, Grand Lake, all in the mid to upper 60s this afternoon. Coming up, we're going to take a closer look at those storms, but again, you can see some of those flood watches, aerial flood watches covering portions of southeastern and southwestern Colorado. And one of those areas right now is in downtown Uray, where you can see on Highway 50, uh, 550 or Main Street, if you want to call it that, how wet it is down there in down here in Uray County and San Miguel County, we've had some mudslides, so causing some uh, road closures up that way. So 550 can be a little treacherous uh, if you're heading in there with some weather to deal with. Take a look at the drive that we have uh, here in Metro Denver. You can see on the overall map, we do have one problem, southbound I-25, right after the Thornton Parkway. Take a look from the camera up there, and you can see that that right lane is blocked. We have three vehicles here. Traffic is already getting heavy from 104th. It's not horribly bad right now because uh, the light traffic that we've seen here this morning, so it's going to cost you a couple extra minutes coming in from that north side. The rest of the drive looks okay. Anywhere else you want to go, it's been a lighter than normal travel day here this morning. Jason, well, we are working to learn more right now about three children rescued from the scene of a double murder in Loveland. Uh, this small neighborhood was surrounded by crime scene tape late into the night. Denver 7's Russell Haythorn reports on the big questions that remain about who the victims were and how mm. those kids are doing. Yeah, all indications are this was a family. We've learned three children were in hiding inside the home when police arrived and police say they were able to safely remove those children. We're still trying to learn what their condition is this morning. We also know there were two murder victims inside the home. We don't know their relationship to the suspect and we know the suspect later shot and killed himself. Police say they arrived here on scene at about two o'clock yesterday afternoon. They had received a 911 call about a weapon here. It was at that same time, neighbors tell Denver 7 they heard two loud bangs, which they now know were gunshots. Then there was screaming, apparently from a woman and kids, according to neighbors. Neighbors describe a flood of officers pouring into the neighborhood with guns drawn, surrounding the house. And then after about 45 minutes, they heard a flashbang outside the home's door. And that's when they say police went inside, presumably, to rescue the three children. We get out here and look and we, there's just people, guns drawn. I mean, the, the SWAT team was here and just kids screaming in the streets. And it was just like, what is happening here? And you could just see something in the yard. There was a white sheet over it. So I just all of a sudden it went into a panic and it just didn't look good. Police have identified the suspect as 49 year old Javier Acevedo. Neighbors say at one time he did live in this neighborhood. Acevedo fled the scene yesterday, but was eventually spotted down in Erie with a rifle. Police down there issued a stay in place order for several neighborhoods. And then about 30 minutes later, police say Acevedo shot and killed himself. That's the latest from Loveland. I'm Russell Haythorn, Denver 7. Russell, thank you. And take a look at your screen now. Fort Collins police need your help finding this 15 year old. Tegan Pixley Johnson is wanted for attempted murder after a shooting yesterday. It happened near Overland Trail and Mulberry Street. Police found a 28 year old man with multiple gunshot wounds. They believe the victim and Pixley Johnson know each other.
A new lawsuit is challenging Colorado's high capacity magazine ban. The Rocky Mountain gun owners say the ban enacted after the Aurora Theater shooting is unconstitutional. The lawsuit references a recent Supreme Court decision on a New York case which found a gun permitting law in New York violated the Second Amendment. The group has also sued the town of Superior, preventing bans on assault weapons, large capacity magazines and ghost guns from going into effect. This September, the U.S. will have an updated COVID booster shot. Now, so far the data is limited, but this one is expected to be stronger against the Omicron subvariant BA5. It's become the most dominant strain of the virus in much of the world. In fact, President Biden is recovering from BA5. I talked to a local doctor about how often we may need to get boosters in the future. Where we sit at the moment is the, the variants are coming out at a five to six month, five to seven month rate um, and they're divergent enough such that getting boosters every six months or so is, is going to be a really good idea. Uh, I would say probably for the next year. Um, after that, we're not really clear on how the how the variants will spin out, um, whether that that variant development will be on a six month time scale, will it be on a two year time scale? And so our, our boosting regimen, recommended boosting regimen um, is really going to be centered on that rate of variant generation. Right now, only Americans 50 and over and the immunocompromised are eligible for a second booster, but that will likely change when uh, this new one comes out in September. Some people we know have COVID symptoms for days, but others uh, see them linger for weeks or months. The National Institutes of Health is studying this at more than 80 sites across the country, including Aurora and Denver. If you've experienced long COVID and are interested in participating, you can learn more on the website recovercovid.org. And uh, again, so many things to worry about if you're the parent of a small child. The CDC, though, is now issuing a health advisory for another virus. It's called Pareca virus, and it's spreading across multiple states, including here in Colorado. Now, Pareca virus impacts children mostly under five years old and especially young infants. The symptoms to watch for are a fever, a rash, or poor eating habits. At Children's Hospital Colorado, they have a test that can diagnose it. How long have you had this test? I just so I, I know that uh, this spinal fluid test. Yeah, so we've been running this test since about 2017 at Children's Hospital Colorado. It's a really rapid test that we can take a very small amount of spinal fluid and within two hours get an answer for many common viruses and bacteria that can cause meningitis or central nervous system infections. And it's really improved our ability to care for these young infants because we can get a name for what's actually going on and know the expected course of disease and be able to inform the parents and really manage them best knowing what's causing their illness. Dr. Messikar stressed that uh, most kids do get this when they're children and many have no symptoms. Uh, but again, if you have an infant who develops a fever, that is urgent and you should get them to the emergency room. He says the virus uh, largely disappeared during the height of COVID, but it's starting to appear again. It's day three of training camp for the Broncos. They'll be back out at the UC Health Training Center at 10 this morning. Yeah, and once again, Russell Wilson started day two by running the field and high-fiving the fans in the front row. His wife and kids also came out once again to cheer him on. And you may have noticed out there, and if you're heading out, you will see them, uh, these unique helmets. They're called guardian caps. The NFL made them mandatory for all linemen, linebackers, and tight ends. Our sports team asked the players how they like the new headgear. They're kind of ugly, but... They're not necessarily the best fashion statement. I was thinking about wearing one, but I... I decided not to. Kind of just makes my head feel heavy. Kind of feel like a bobblehead, man. I feel like it adds like, well, it gives me negative five speed on Madden. We have a joke in O-line, O-line room. Uh, we won't be getting any good pictures in, in training camp <laughs> with these on. And the NFL found these caps can reduce impact severity by at least 10%. So uh, very good that they're wearing them. Denver 7 is your home for Broncos training camp. We'll have special coverage of tomorrow's Saturday session starting at 7 a.m. Well, someone's life could change tonight. The Mega Millions jackpot is now $1.1 billion. If you match all six numbers, the cash option is pretty nice too, nearly $650 million. Your odds of winning, one in $302 million. We checked. The Colorado Lottery says Coloradans spent more than a million dollars on tickets four out of the last six days, not including yesterday. Uh, more than $3 million was spent on Tuesday. 
uh, which was the day of the last drawing. Uh, that's a big jump from June when the jackpot was much lower and people were only spending about $121,000 on tickets per day. We're all trying to stay hydrated this summer. Some people are turning to electrolytes for a boost, but there's a warning from experts before you drink up. And some good news if you are a frequent Southwest flyer. The company is shaking up the whole industry with a big change to flight credits.